thought it was crazy to even think about taking a Humber river barge from Hull all the way to Saudi Arabia. But the money the Saudi sheikh was offering was crazy too. The plan was to get to the Mediterranean via the French canal system. But it turned out our boat was just one inch too wide for the locks. So I called the uh, sheikh's agents and I said, look, we can't complete the voyage because to go by sea would be treacherous in October. It would be a suicide mission. But the guy said, what if we pay you more? So the next morning we started a sailing. First was the Channel Islands. Our first big test was the infamous Bay of Biscay, known for its treacherous waters. And any mariner will tell you that it's probably the most dangerous sea in the world. We'd almost made it across when the sea suddenly blew up into a full storm. I managed to take shelter in a small Spanish harbour for a few days, before then creeping around the Portuguese coast, where the northerly wind drove huge 25, 30 foot waves southwards. We managed to catch the right wave and we barge surfed the entire Portuguese coast virtually on one wave. Barge surfing is the same as normal surfing because the bottom of the barge is the same as a surfboard. The difference is there's no beach so the wave is constant and non-ending and there's quite a bit more risk in flipping the barge over than there is a surfboard. <laughs> it's frightening for the first 20 minutes, of course, with a 30 foot wave on your shoulder about to fall on your head. We ended up at Gibraltar, where we and our little ship were immediately arrested and our barge chained to the dock. The first rule of piracy is always be ready to escape. It took us 10 days of audacious planning to finally attempt our escape. After hacksawing through the chains and stealing several tons of fuel oil over the course of five days, we reversed out of the port and went to the port entrance with all hell breaking loose around us. The port captain was going bananas, jumping up and down and ordering us to stop by radio. Of course, I didn't reply. Instead, I connected the radio to our small cassette player and blasted out Rod Stewart's Maggie Maggie May. I wanted to play sailing, but I put the tape in the wrong way round. Each time the port captain changed radio channels, so did I. With all the mess I was causing on the radio channels, the port captain and all those involved were forced to use megaphones. The last time I saw him, he was jumping up and down at the end of the dock with a big white megaphone screaming absurd orders at me and at everyone else around him. The big Gibraltar pilot boat tried to block us at the entrance, but I was soon out at sea. We were then quickly met by the Gibraltar Straits patrol ship. On that day, it was a large vessel, probably a frigate, with hundreds of Royal Navy guys on board and billions of pounds worth of, of sonar and radar stuff. After some hours of cat and mouse, I managed to outwit them and we made our way into Moroccan waters. We laid low for a couple of days hiding in Morocco and then headed east to Malta where we were welcomed as heroes by the local people who had heard of our exploits. Shortly after leaving Malta we were hit by a hurricane. It was the first hurricane in 22 years. An Italian super tanker called the Caspian Sea from Genova stood by us for shelter while we backed down. Then, with no other option, we went barge surfing again to wherever the hurricane would take us. 33 hours later, it took our badly damaged barge to the Greek island of Kathira. In Kathira, we repaired most of the damage, then sailed south to Crete and on to Port Said and the Suez Canal. We were the only Humber barge ever to pass through the Suez Canal and into the Red Sea and on to our destination, Jeddah, Saudi Arabia where we arrived, incredibly, on Boxing Day.